Hey, oh, you're from the Neighborhood Quarter Guy here, and welcome back to my Blind Let's Play of Adventures of Pip. On the last episode, we entered the swamp, and today we're going into the further reaches. But first, I need to say something. While I was recording this, I had to replace my mic, and uh, I forgot to reset the settings, so this is going to be post commentary. But before we travel into the swamp further, a lot of people wanted me to show you what was in town, so let me show you that. Now, the town is populated with the villagers that you rescue throughout the game. And as you unlock certain villagers, you unlock new shops. Hey there, all pi pixel people there. First, let me show you what's in the merchant's shop. Now, the merchant I rescued in the first level of the game. Come on in, I've got loads of things for sale. What you need? Tell me! Yeah, you can get various boosts here. You can get potions, auto potions, detectors, heart pieces and other stuff. Right now I couldn't afford much, but I could I could I could afford like the uh, one of each of the detectors and the uh, fireball item. So basically that's what I did. Buy something, will ya? That's pretty much what it amounts to. Yeah. All right. Now that that's out of the way, let's take a look at the blacksmith shop. If you want to know what, yeah. I come from a long line of warriors and swordsmiths. Our history runs deep and bloody. Want to buy something? Well, I would if I would have if I had enough money by that point. This is where you get your upgrades. The first one I was going to get was the Midas, once I had enough bits, well, I mean pixels. We can get various upgrades, like heart, like weapon and armor boosts, but I couldn't afford anything at that point, so... Yeah. Each of the villagers has their own personality, well, well, their own dialogue anyway, but not much in the way of personality since they're NPCs. Anyways... As we move along the map, let's proceed onward, shall we? Now, for all your sakes, I've been cutting out the loading screens for the most part. Now, let's, let's proceed further into the swamp, shall we? Now, I learned a hard lesson here. Fists plus spiked enemies is a bad idea. Yeah, you have to be in your... 16 slash 32 bit form to be able to attack those spiked enemies. The regular slimes are fair game for my fists, though. A little slugger in training, yeah. Now, this room required a little bit of good timing. I had to glide past those things and land on the platform on the other side. I thought I, I thought it would take some good timing and, and maybe a, an attempt or two, but. I did it without much trouble. I guess I underestimated myself there. Now here was where I would have to put my my sword form to use. Actually, let's call this my 16-bit form. Yeah. And this is where I saw the first villager of the level. In a little alcove there. Slash! Yeah, way to put some extra treasure down there. Easy enough to collect and useful for me to get more items on the way. Excuse me. Shinies. Shiny pixels. Shiny glory. Oh, and an apple. Yeah, because I totally needed that at that point. Now, the 16 uh, bit form is. I keep forgetting whether it's six, supposed to be 16 or 32 bit. But. That forearm is relatively slow and can't bounce on the mushrooms. The lighter you are, the easier time you'll have getting higher. And there's the second villager of the level. I need to jump on one of those flying enemies to reach her. And have the proper timing, of course. Like that. From there, I proceed onward. Climbing up the walls as 8-bit Pip. And there's our first checkpoint along with a nice health refill while we were at it. Can 
I say again how much I really like the level design in this game? The levels are really well designed and take advantage of Pip's various forms. For example, here I'd have to bounce up the walls as as Apit Pip, and then slash at the blocks in my 16 slash 32 bit form. I keep forgetting whether that's supposed to be 16 bit or 32 bit. You know what? From here on out, I'll just call it 16 bit, because that's probably how it's supposed to be. Bitstream power up. I just love I just love having a sword in my I just love my character having a sword in his hands. I'm one of those characters who prefers prefers swords to guns because it takes longer to properly aim a gun than it does to swing a sword. Yeah, a friend of mine told me about this episode of MythBusters where it's actually not necessarily a bad idea to bring a sword to a gunfight. Because unless the person with the gun can aim, like, really quickly, the person with the sword will have a speed advantage. At least that was what the episode basically, basically uh, concluded. Anyways. Boom. I really like how each puzzle takes advantage of the various forms of abilities and requires you to use them strategically. That's good level design. Now this area... I had a little bit of trouble with on the footing. Well, not necessarily here. Oops. Now... This one little platform right there, I kept slipping off of because my timing was off. It's uh, kind of embarrassing, actually. I've been playing games for most of my life and uh, having trouble with something like this. What is the... <laughs> ah, there we go. And I realized there that I needed to wall jump there. Of course, I had trouble getting back on that platform because... Jump timing seems to be a little exact. Boing! Yeah. Watch me have trouble with this one platform. Yeah. Fail. Whoops. <laughs> Again. Boing! <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, boy, this was getting tiresome. But ultimately, I got on the platform just fine. And well, I didn't get a village, and that's where the th third villager was. So I'm glad I went through all that trouble, because otherwise I wouldn't have made it. And there we go again. Yeah. Timing has always been essential in platformers, and, uh, well, my timing was a bit off that day. Up the walls to, to get a little, to get a little treasure. Come on, come on. Yep. Yeah, sometimes the timing can be a little bit exact. I say a little bit exact. Or maybe I was just having an off day. Slash! And those and those enemies, they were easy pickings. Slash, slash, slash. And I figured I'd be better off in my apron form for this a little bit there, because I had to climb up the walls. And that switch! Lower, I mean, raises and lowers the walls up there to get to the, so I can get to the exit. And, and I had to push that block over on that switch to get up there. Good thing, because the exit's right up there, and I could get out of this level. I, of course, have to be my aphid form first. And wait for that enemy to drop so that I could jump on it. Remember, I was playing this blind. 
And that's it for this level. Stage clear! One, two, three. Perfect! Now this unlocks the next level, obviously enough. So let's not waste any more time. Swamp 2-4. Yeah. Now here's where the scenery changes a little. Shing, shing. That temple up ahead? It's cursed. Very cursed. As cursed as any temple's ever been. Yeah, you think? Aren't temples always cursed? It's also full of booby traps and lots of nasty creatures that would love to tear you into pixels. Uh, yeah, thanks for the obvious information. Temples like these are always booby trapped. And right there, our first villager of the level. And a block that needs to be pushed onto a switch. That jaw opening. It's an ominous sight. Kind of foreshadowing, wouldn't you say? So, uh, be careful. Continue not dying. Oh, and I can't continue with you any longer. Oh, thanks, useless ghost. Not like it taught us and. Like it is. Remember, that true strength comes from within. Because that's where your muscles are. Good luck. Yeah, bad joke. Useless ghost. Now, onward! Now, right away, you can tell that there's going to be a lot of switches in this area because, well, it's a temple, and uh, temple stages tend to have stuff like this. That switch raises the floor segment so I can continue onward. Yeah. Sweet raising and lowering walls. Pretty much standard fare for a temple level. Boing! Didn't hear those blocks there with a single swipe of my sword. And those two switches raise those walls down there. I, uh, messed up the first time trying to get to that second switch, as you're about to see. Yeah, it turns out this acceleration is higher than I thought. But after a couple tries, I got it right. And I needed to power up again to get to the switch. Boing! There we go. I'll admit I'm not the best with post-commentary. Well, I'm not the best with commentary in general. Hey, look! Treasure chest! I'll take those. Yeah, now... Yeah, now I need my single pixel form to get to this area. Well, get there and to jump up the walls, I need my 8-bit form. Whoops! Silly me. Boing! Up! 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 Boing! Yeah, I needed that platform to be up there, so... Boing! The extra height was needed there. However... My inherent curiosity got the better of me at this point, because I thought there was something hidden in that, uh, little alcove up there. Because there usually is. However, after several attempts, I decided, well, you'll see. I should have realized something was up when I didn't go through the wall right away. Guess I didn't. Oh well. Get up there. Yeah. Let's just skip that. Okie dokie. 
it was that point I said, eh, screw it, and I said continue on. Good thing, too, there was a checkpoint right there. Alrighty. And here we have more spiked enemies. Good thing I'm the right height at this point to avoid them. Just gotta be careful. Boing. Boing. Yeah, waiting for enemies like this can be a bit boring. Yeah, that puzzle down there would involve me, uh... Pulling out those blocks. Simple puzzle, really. Just gotta wait for the bitstream enemy to reappear again. And... Boing! Yeah, no trouble there. And more wall jumping. X style. Mm hmm. Of course, the classic spear in the wall trap. Classic for temples like these. And each of those switches would, uh, was meant for those wall segments up there. Release the hoons! The, uh, purple, spherical, definitely dangerous hoons. There we go. And there's our checkpoint. Oomph. Boing. And there's our second villager for this level. Behind a couple spears. Okay. Just a little jumping there, no big deal for that one. The third villager, on the other hand, uh, took a little doing. You'll see shortly. It's probably not the best idea to proceed as the 16-bit pep. Now, uh, this one took a little trying to figure out. I, I wondered if something was up there. I suspected something was up there with those blocks hovering there. Then I made that mistake right there, dropping that block. As you can see, it would lead to, lead to a mistake on my part. Yeah, remember, this is a blind run, so I'm bound to make my sh share of mistakes. Thankfully... Ever since the fourth episode, I started off cutting out most of my deaths. And I realized I couldn't do anything. Well, I tried to find my way back, but I ended up dying here. Anyway, here's how you do it. You have to move that block to the left, take out those blocks above, transform into six, I mean to eight bit pip, and jump up to this hidden area here. Apple for good measure. Apple a day keeps the bad guys away. Well, not really, but you get the idea. I have to be a little clingy here to, uh, get across. But as you can see, it worked out. And saved the third villager. And that's a wrap for that level. Stage clear! One, two, three. Perfect! And that opens up the next area in the swamp. Two, five. Now let's not waste any more time. Let's proceed, shall we? I'm gonna skip the loading screen. And our adventures in this temple in the swamp continue. Yeah, there's some Indiana Jones level crap right here. And we in are introduced to a new obstacle. That enemy right there. It's a bomb. And it's meant to destroy blocks that... Same kind of blocks that the, uh sword can destroy. Good way to introduce us to that, TikTok games. I like the way they actually do introduce levels, I mean, obstacles in here. They introduce them in a way that isn't immediately dangerous. That's good advance right there. And a good treasure chest right down there. Yeah, 
Yeah, but that was a bad play on my part. I, I might have probably I might have had been better waiting for that bomb to go off. And those chests, chests, yeah, they're too good to be true. Classic bait, but I was forced to fall for it. For the sake of progress, you know. And that's which releases the, yeah, that's which opens up the chute for bomb enemies to come out of. I don't, I don't really like situations where you have to lure bomb enemies towards certain areas, because it can be rather delicate. And since bombs only have a short fuse, you have to be sometimes be pretty exact. And I wasn't exact in that point. Well, I was there, and I was, I was exact enough there. And good thing, too, because that's where the first villager in the level was. And now I just have to lure this one over there. Boop! Power of the Bitstream! Power of a switch to, to disable s spears. Yeah. Of course, I didn't know that the first time I uh, hit the switch. But, yeah... I eventually, I noticed it, so... Up the walls I went. And there's the second villager in the level. Of course, the first time I tried to save that one, I uh, kind of failed. Second time's a charm, though! Boing and boing. I probably didn't need to revert to my normal form there, but... Probably for the best. Wouldn't want to waste the powering up. Sliding down the walls like so. Up we go. And another situation where there's a necessary... Well, I actually might have been able to avoid that trap if I was uh, more careful. But hey, there's the checkpoint, so... And when that enemy appeared, I realized there was a hidden area there. So, what naturally do I do? Well, first I collect that chest, but then I proceed toward that hidden area. Yep. There we go. Whoops! Fail! Fail! Yeah, you'll live and learn, though. And you get across. Yep. And there's the third villager of the level. Light across to collect him. You're safe now, citizen. Yeah, this would require good use of both... Of... of both the uh, pixel form and the 32, but I mean the 16-bit form. I keep getting, I keep mixing up the names. Boing! Bomb enemy! Explodey! Boing! Boing! And uh, I, was, I had a feeling the end of the level was near because I had, had all three villagers rescued. Boing. Hup. Hup. There we go. Boom! And down goes the block. Well, that was easy enough. Climb up, the climb up would be relatively simple. The stream's right there, so there we go. Stage clear. Under eighty pixels there, and all three villagers rescued. Perfect. And that's about where I decided to wrap things up for this episode. That's all for now. Next time we'll finish up the swamp. Until then, this is the quarter guy signing out. Oh.